Yes, sir. Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to give an update on the markets, the stock market, the crypto market, the everything. Mike, we're going to talk about a little bit of everything. So here we go. Uh, Q1 GDP uh, did come out today. That was the third look, as I said. And it showed that personal consumption expenditures came in at 1.8%. Now, this was significantly lower than expected as the estimate, believe it or not, was 3.1%. So you can kind of see that big gap there. That's uh, not very good. Now, as Q1 GDP fell 1.6%, uh, the New York Fed model actually showed that uh, uh, negative GDP for 2022 and 2023 so yes the new york fed is their models are literally showing that we're very likely going to have negative gdp for uh 2022 and 2023 that's what you're saying uh this means that the new york fed is expecting a long lasting recession this is something important that you guys need to understand there's been talk on wall street there really is a great divide here you have some people on wall street who think we're going to have a very fast recession actually they think we're going to have a recession similar to what you saw in 2020 they think that the recession is going to be quick which for those who don't know we had a recession in 2020 but it was very quick it was like two weeks or something like that it was extremely quick some people think that the recession that we're going to have this year next year whatever whatever it comes they think that that recession is going to be quick however there are other people on wall street who disagree and they actually think that we are going to have a long lasting recession. I'm here to tell you guys right now, I am actually of that belief too. I think we're going to have a longer recession than people think. I, I think we're actually going to have a real recession. I'll tell you why, right? I think in 2020, we were supposed to have a real long lasting recession, which keep in mind, recessions are not necessarily bad. I mean, they are bad, but they're normal in an economic you know, cycle. Like they're normal, like in an economy that runs the way ours does, Every so often, you're going to have a recession, right? Like, that's just how it goes. And what happened was we were supposed to have one in 2020, but the Fed actually delayed that recession by stepping in and doing what they did, as most of you guys know. And so the Fed delayed that recession, and all that's happening is that good old R word recession is rearing back around. And like I said, I'm not so sure that the Fed is going to be able to do anything this time and is going to save markets. And honestly, we were supposed to have a recession in 2020, but the Fed stopped it. I do not think that that is going to be the case this time. And because I don't think that the Fed is going to save us this time, um, I honestly do believe that we're probably going to have a legit recession, like a long lasting one, to be completely honest. But who really knows, right? Now, it's important to also understand. I want to just make sure I make this extremely clear that we are obviously in a bear market. Uh, the average bear market falls 36% within a matter of uh, 10 months. So the average bear market lasts about 10 months. And on average, it falls about 35, 36%. Uh, right now, we're only down like 19, 20%. And this is in a matter of six months. And we also have the Fed raising rates and what I believe to be a declining economy. They think the economy is strong. Obviously, the Federal Reserve is the Federal Reserve. Who am I to talk? But this is my opinion. I, I think it's the opposite. I think the, the, the economy is declining. That's just me. Now, in terms of what you got coming up tomorrow, we actually have something extremely important. Huge. And that is the PCE numbers come out at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. This is yet another inflation indicator and also the inflation indicator that the federal reserve actually prefers very important we realize this the fed actually prefers to pay attention to the pce rather than uh, cpi in terms of when they're looking at inflation now pce which stands for uh, personal consumption expenditures price index is a measure of the prices that people living in the United States uh, pay for goods and services. That's basically what it is. In terms of what else you can expect tomorrow, you also get jobless claims and uh, Chicago PMI. That's definitely going to be something that you're going to want to watch too. Chicago PMI has to do with manufacturing, so you're definitely going to watch out for that as well. Obviously, jobless claims are jobless claims. We know what that is. Now, I want to move on over to crypto news here, and this is actually extremely important. So, in terms of the crypto news, the infamous crypto hedge fund, you guys know them very well at this point, out of Singapore, uh, Three Earls Capital has been ordered into liquidation by a British Virgin Islands court. This is more drama and foolishness that is happening in the crypto world. And then the last thing I want to go ahead and leave you guys off with in terms of this crypto thing is something that one of my followers actually put me on with. So shout out to Corn Pop. He's a subscriber. He told me about this. So we all know a lot of people think that the Alameda... Uh, giving a credit line to Voyager Digital is a good thing. However, if you look at this leak from uh, BlockFi, you can actually kind of see that that actually might not be as good for shareholders as you might think. And so what happened is uh, the FTX credit line proposal has a catch 
for BlockFi's existing shareholders. And so what it does is it gives FTX the option to buy BlockFi at essentially zero price. If FTX were to exercise this set option, it would effectively wipe out all of BlockFi's existing equity shareholders, including management and employees with stock options, as well as all equity investors in the company's previous venture rounds. Now, what does that mean? Well, if this same stipulation exists for Voyager Digital, which it very well could, that can really screw investors. And that's something that you're going to want to pay attention to. And I think it's also important for you guys to not be so naive because when Sam Bankman Free first did this, a lot of you guys were like, oh, Sam is trying to save crypto. No, this is capitalism, baby. These people are not here to save anybody. They could give a rat's butt. They could care less. They are here to take over, dominate, and do what's the, what's best for them in their business. So I'm not surprised to hear that there's you know, a little bit of this going on, a little bit of shady stuff going on with Sam Bankman Freed and his takeover of, uh, not takeover, but his support his fake support of BlockFi and Voyager and different things like that. The guy's not trying to save crypto. He's trying to do what's best for him and his company. And you could clearly see that with that leak call. So for those who are, you know, in the Voyager code, I would be very careful because if this happens and they exercise that option, I don't know if this set option exists for Voyager as well, but I, I'm pretty sure it does. And if that's the case, you're going to be, you're going to want to be extremely careful. So that that's it. That's my warning to you guys. And so, uh, yeah, there you guys have it. Today's news day is not as big, but still some very interesting things that uh, you want to look out for tomorrow. Definitely, like I said, the headline for tomorrow is going to be PC. Definitely going to want to keep an eye on that. And so, yeah, uh, there you guys have it. That'll go ahead and conclude today's video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.